The blowout loss to Indiana, um, 86 to 69. You see it there. And Clark was held to 24 points. Now, for anybody else in college <laughs> basketball, that is like a career high. But for Kaitlin Clark, it was her second lowest scoring output the entire season. Uh, Alexa, how did the Hoosiers do it? How did they stop her? And maybe have they figured out a blueprint for other teams to stop Caitlin going forward? I think you could say they did. And that graphic that we had above <laughs> our heads of Caitlin Clark really looking frustrated, yeah. I think that said it all. I mean, they really made life live in hell for her. So she only made eight of her shots in the field, three threes. They really made it difficult for her to get anything going. But then they also did a really good job defensively of making sure no one else totally went off. But that kind of goes back to this question that we have about Iowa's. Can other people step up if Caitlin has an off night? And they couldn't against Indiana. No, they haven't been able to. And I, again, I keep bringing up these names, Monica Sonano and McKenna Warnock. It feels like they're really missing them as their second and third options, which that's nothing against, you know, Kate Martin and Hannah Stolke. Like they've yeah. had big games. Obviously, Hannah had the 47-point game against Penn State. Uh, but this this doesn't feel quite the same. And I think the thing that has stuck out to me with Caitlin Clark is you can kind of see and hear her frustration post game. Like even after the Nebraska mm -hmm. loss, you know, they were asking her about the record. She's like, dude, we gotta stop blowing games. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. We're we're coming away with some of these, but like we this has to look more consistent until they get there. Like it hasn't looked so far like this could be the same type of year where she's able to just shoot them out of these situations. Right. We, we've all heard, too, Caitlin Clark give interviews. She's one of the nicest people and always puts uh, a lot of the credit to her teammates mm -hmm. for her success, right? But she needs those teammates now to step up and help her win games because she wants to win. So, Lyles, the question for Iowa has been, can they get those pieces going to win and go to a national championship? Do they have what it takes this year to do that or no? It, it feels tough. I, I don't. I don't have the same confidence in it this year. It, it, it just. It's not there. Like even this time last year, same game, Indiana. She leads them and they they won that one. It was a buzzer beater. Obviously, still a, a close matchup, but this looked like a completely different team. Um, uh, they really stumped them. I mean, it was a dominant performance. I and mean, we were sitting here watching some of the highlights before the show started. And we were like, yo. Like, like they're really sort of, sort of bodying them, right. sort of throwing them around, and that's not used to the Iowa team that we're used to seeing. And I do want to add too, Indiana scored was it 86 points, so they, their mm -hmm. offense got going. They made a lot of threes. They had, I think, two players, Mackenzie Holmes and Sarah Scalia, mm. combined for 49 points. So it's not just that Iowa, you know, they usually need to win by outscoring their opponent, but if they're going to allow 86 points, and that's mm going to be really tough, too, to beat some of these elite teams. Yeah. So the loss put Iowa two games back from Big Ten leader Ohio State.